Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello. I have said many times in these lectures that EPR spectrum appears in the form of a Lorentzian line cell, but I have never explained why that should be so. So, today we are going to learn and see how the spin relaxation processes actually decide the line cell. So, before we start let us look at the concept of uh, magnetization today little more carefully. Earlier I have used the term magnetization without defining it very rigorously. So, for that let us consider not a single spin, but a collection of spin something like Avogadro number of spins which are typically used in an experiment. So, as this many spins are put in a magnetic field, they will point along various directions given by their allowed angular momentum and allowed values of the magnetic moments. So, we know that mu is a magnetic moment for an electron, this is given as minus G e beta e s and so s can take various components in a magnetic field. So, m s values are given as minus s to plus s changing in units of 1. So, for a spin half system for example, electron if I have a larger number of spins then m s takes well plus half or minus half and we know by now that in a magnetic field which is pointing along let us say this is the B magnetic field pointing on a z direction. Many of these little spins will point in along the positive z direction and also many of them will point along the negative z direction this is x, y and z. So, it is the sum of all these will give rise to the net magnetic moment of all these particles. So, magnetization is defined as total magnetic moment divided by the volume. Now, total magnetic moment of course, has to be obtained by adding all this individual magnetic moment of the individual particles. Now, you see that if these two orientations for this one are equally populated, then there will be as many number of spins which are going up and as many number of spin going down they will be all equal. So, net angular moment will be 0 and net magnetized also be 0 and that is true for not just s equal to half if I have s of some other value then I can have this sort of let us say energy level starting from m is equal to minus s to m is equal to plus s. So, if all the levels are equally populated by the various spins then if I sum over all the magnetic moments here I will get the magnetic total magnetic moment average will be precisely 0. But in thermal equilibrium when uh, 
the spins are distributed among various energy levels, the distribution is governed by Boltzmann distribution. Now, we all know that electrons are spin of particles, so they are supposed to follow Fermi Dirac statistics, they are called fermions. That is absolutely correct, but the type of systems we have here that these particles which really do not interact very much, they behave almost like independent particles. For such weakly interacting particles or non interacting particles, the Boltzmann distribution works equally well. So, we will use this distribution to find out how this various particles will be distributed among the various ms values. If the lower level will be more populated than the higher level, this will be a little bit less, it will be still less, this will be still less, this will be the least populated one. So, now if I add all the magnetic moment, the net result is not going to be 0. Therefore, the system will have a net magnetization. So, each of this ms values will have its own energy associated with that, that is given by g beta i. If b 0 is the magnetic field which is uh, pointing along the z direction then g beta i p 0 s z is the energy corresponding to oh, ok. M z is the energy corresponding to the energy level given by the corresponding M z values. So, this should be M z here and M z there. So, we know, know that for Boltzmann distribution the number of particles is n 1 by n 2 follow this type of distribution. where delta is the energy difference between the level which has got n 1 particle and this is n 2 particle. But here the various energy levels are given by this set of expression and m z varies from one level to the other. So, we can calculate the fraction of particle that these various levels will have given by Let's call it spin population. In the MS or I call it M Z level is given by. this is understandable that this is the sum of all the possibilities. So, that is a normalization factor. So, this ratio gives the fraction of population at a, a level which is characterized by the value of m z. So, if we take sum over all m z this is the total likelihood. So, now if the 
number of particles in unit volume equal to n then I find out how many of this n are distributed in various energizables here and each of them will have a magnetic moment given by expression of this kind. So, I get the average value of the magnetization coming out for this n particles and since n is the number of particles in unit volume that average magnetization will essentially give rise to the magnetic moment give rise to the magnetization. M is therefore given by this N times M is equal to minus S2 plus S to the power. V0 is missing here. So, that is it. So, if we can simplify this thing and get some sort of descent looking expression, that will be the magnetization. How do I make it uh, descent looking? Here the energy gap between this various states are of the order of this J beta V0 type of thing. And for typical magnetic field of V0, let us say about 3000 Gauss and G is typical 2. this factor that is this factor turns out to be less than 10 to the minus 2. So, of course, and at temperature less T is equal to some 300 Kelvin room temperature. So, this is the typically the condition we employ in the in according to the spectrum. So, here this ratio is very small. So, the exponential here can be expanded and we can keep only the first two term that is exponential x 1 plus x plus we keep only this two term here. Then let us see how that expression simplifies. So, then the magnetization M becomes The denominator is m is equal to again minus s to plus s one minus 
G E beta I times it by K T. Now, here when this summation is carried over this term here, you see that this will take all the values from minus s to plus s in, in interval of 1. So, this sum will be 0. In the same way, when this is summation is done over this term, then again mz takes all the value from minus s to plus s, so this sum will be exactly 0. So, but this number 1 will be added 2 s plus 1 times. So, this is the is equal to This is square, I forgot. This square comes from this uh, reason that they already there is one here and then other one comes from the expansion here. So, you multiply these two so that this gives rise to square of that one. this will be 2 s plus 1. So, this is n g beta i square b 0 I can have forgotten k t here. this one. Now, here if now S is a whole number let us say 1, 2, 3 then m z will take value 0, 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 up to some number plus minus s. These are the possible m s values. So, when I take the square of that for both plus and minus the values are same. So, they will appear in pairs and 0 of course, does not contribute to this. So, this is essentially this summation means that I take the sum of integers of this kind 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square up to s square and this is known the summation is known. this is the summation of this, but since this appears in pairs this summation will be two times I do not need any more this one. what I get from here this two cancels well and this gives 3. So, this gives the simplified expression of magnetization is equal to this is s into s plus 1 by 3 k t. So, this is the expression of fundamental.
here in this derivation I have taken the value of s to be a whole integer that is how we could use this expression here and then it simplifies to this. Now, it is possible that s can be half integer also. So, s equal to for example, 3 by 2 then m z or I should call m s I suppose m s is the component of the magnetic moment vector. Here so, so ms will be minus three by two minus half plus half plus three by two, or it appears in pairs of these values, plus three by two plus minus half. So here, this expression cannot be used exactly as it is. So one has to change it to this half integral values and then do the summation. So, I leave it to you as an exercise and see that you indeed can do that just cleverly manipulate this summation here and then everything will be very similar because this m z square appear there. So, all the values will appear in pair and same. So, you I leave it to exercise and see how you can do the summation here. Now, it turns out that even if the s is half integer, this is still valid, the same expression is valid there. So, this is true for all possible values of the spin angular momentum quantum number. So, you see now that the moment the number of spins are kept in a magnetic field, it develops a magnetization when kept in a magnetic field V0 there. And of course, now we know it is because all the levels are not equally populated. So, there is a term called susceptibility or magnetic susceptibility which is related to magnetization in this fashion. Called static susceptibility. When it kept a magnetic field B0, let us say I get a magnetization in this kind. Then, if you compare this with this, the static susceptibility is nothing but this N and this you should be able to recognize that this is nothing but the Curie law. Of the magnetic susceptibility and its temperature dependence. So, if the external magnetic field is along the z direction, the net this magnetization that we have calculated, this will also therefore, point along this z direction. So, if I have another color this is the magnetization. So, at equilibrium therefore, this magnetization points along the direction of the magnetic field. Now, if it so happens that something is done to the system and we disturb the orientation of the spin such a way that this magnetization does not point towards this direction and point some other direction. In other words, what I am trying to say is that see at thermal equilibrium this magnetization which is a considered a vector quantity because it has a direction and also magnitude has only the z component, it has no x or y component. So, at equilibrium there is no x or y component, but it is possible that we can disturb the spin system such a way that this magnetization 
can have x and y component also. This m now magnetic vector has this component So once again at thermal equilibrium mz is this is equal to 0 this is also equal to 0 and this takes the maximum value which I have derived here now I will call it as equilibrium magnetization I call it m equilibrium. How does one visualize this? Here again see these individual spins are pointing in all possible directions along this cone here. So, if I take the their projections on the x y plane, they will have all sorts of orientation here. There will not be any preferred orientation of this. So, naturally sum of this is going to be 0 for both x and y component. So, any spin distribution which changes this magnetization from the equilibrium value to some other value can in general produce non-zero value for this and this and a value which is different from the equilibrium value. So, here the spin relaxation process is going to restore this population to the thermal distribution here. it is going to restore the thermal distribution or the Boltzmann distribution that we saw earlier and that Boltzmann distribution gave rise to the equilibrium magnetization for the z component no magnetization for this and this. So, the magnetization which is if you write a this way a 3 component 0 0 m equilibrium and if I got non equilibrium magnetization Let's say uh, m x not equal to 0. So, this relaxation processes which are there they will try to bring this to this. This is the job of the spin relaxation processes. Now, here the difference between this change of magnetization from this change of magnetization here is quite significant. See the change of m z magnetization involves flipping of spin from one direction to other direction and that needs energy that causes needs some transition to take place. So, either from here to there or there to here that energy has to be exchanged with the surrounding and the surrounding must give energy when uh, spin flip takes place from this direction or energy must take away the energy when it goes in the other direction. So, that involves exchange of energy that is for the change of m z component of the magnetization, but for m x and m y is to bring back this sort of random distribution of the spins in the x y plane all is necessary is that this various orientations rearranged among themselves. So, that does not need any exchange of energy with the surrounding. So, these two processes 
do that. Just rearrange the, all the spin oriented in such a way the net Mx and Mi component is 0. So, we therefore characterize them by two different terminology and give different time constant for their processes. The time constant for these processes are given by certain time constant, I call them in a define them in a moment. But importantly, Felix Bloch he proposed that that this restoration of this magnetization from non equilibrium value to equilibrium value, this process is a first order process, so which looks like this. And the mz by dt is equal to so these are all first order chemical kinetics type of expression here. Now the time constant for this process is given by this T2 for this and this and T1 for this. So, the reason for these two being different from this is I already mentioned that this involves energy exchange with the surrounding. So, so, the processes or the mechanisms which makes this process to take place supposed to be quite different from the mechanisms which makes this process to occur. So, naturally, their time constant need not be same. We call this process transverse relaxation time. And this is called longitudinal relaxation time. Also, this is called spin spin relaxation time. And this is similarly called spin lattice relaxation time. The meaning is clear that energy exchange between the spin system and the surrounding is involved. Lattice is a general term to designate the surrounding or anything that is other than the spin system. We have seen earlier that the time evolution of a magnetic moment in a magnetic field follows this sort of relation. Where, where this m was the magnetic moment of a, a particle or some system. Now, here we are using the same letter m to designate the magnetization because we are dealing with a collection of particles. Now, since each of these little spin contributes to the total magnetization, this exactly the similar relation holds good for the magnetization also. So, where this is the magnetization. I expect that they should not have any confusion in going from here to there. We are using earlier this equation to describe the time evolution of a magnetic moment in a magnetic field. Now, same exactly similar equation is used to describe the time evolution of a magnetization kept in a magnetic field. So, so here look at this slide here, this is given here. So, when the magnetic field B is along the z direction, then one can expand this term and we get three equations of this kind, d 
dmx by dt is minus gamma e b0 my dmy by dt is equal to plus gamma e beta b0 mx and dmz by dt is 0. So, that is mz component does not change. So, here of course, it shows the simply the evolution of the magnetization in a magnetic field and we know that this is nothing but the precessional motion of the magnetization. Now, to this we add this relaxation processes. Then the equation will look different of course, here all I have done is the add the this three terms here to the corresponding three terms that this equation gives. So, that is it. So, here this shows the evolution of the magnetization vector m x m y m z component of them in this fashion relaxation terms are included here. But in an EPR experiment along with this B 0 we also apply a, an oscillating magnetic field in the x y plane to cause the transition. So, this oscillating magnetic field rotates in the x y plane with a frequency omega. So, how do I show that? So, this is my x y. So, this is B 1 is the oscillating magnetic field, it starts at time t equal to 0 around the x direction and starts. rotating in the x y plane about the z direction at an angular frequency omega. So, after time t the angle that it that it form here will be let us call theta. So, theta will be equal to omega t. So, at this time the x component of this is given by this and y component is given by this. So, here therefore, that B 1 cos omega t i B 1 sin omega t j and we thought of as the B 1 vector. This is the one which is applied along the x y plane and it is moving around the z axis with an angular velocity omega. This is precisely the type of vector expression this will have. So, in this case the magnetization sees two fields one is due to this other is due to this one which is appearing along the z direction. So, the total field B seen by the magnetization is given by therefore, I cos omega t this is x component b 1 sin omega this is the y component k b 0 this is the z component. So, this is the total magnetic field that is experienced by the magnetization. So, again I can include that in the equation here and then find out the time dependence of this in the presence of the oscillating magnetic field and that is done in this slide. So, the x y z are the laboratory coordinate and this total magnetic field in the laboratory coordination is given by this and that give when this expression is inserted here you get the time dependence of the m x m y m z component of the magnetization. So, we will try to solve it using some special technique. At this stage let us summarize what we have done. We have taken a collection of spins and then when they reach thermal equilibrium the different energy levels have different number of spins. So, so using that information we collected the static 
magnetization or equilibrium magnetization which appears here. Then we introduce this blocks idea of the first order chemical kinetics type of term which can restore the non equilibrium magnetization to equilibrium magnetization and introduce these two different time constant for that. And finally, we got this time dependence of the magnetization in the presence of all the magnetic fields that the magnetization sees. So, these equations are called the block equation for the time dependence of magnetization. These are very famous in magnetic resonance studies. With this we stop this lecture and we will continue our discussion in the next one.